Sure, yeah. Um, uh, my name is uh, Steve uh, Ramsey. I am uh, a grateful believer in Jesus who is uh, kind of finding freedom uh, from uh, several hurts, habits, and hangups uh, through Celebrate Recovery. Uh, and that's the program that uh, I would love to, to share with the church uh, and what it has uh, done in my life and, uh, and what it can do in the lives of those who are hurting, those who are looking for freedom, those who are looking for you know, a lasting change um, in a relationship. Uh, you know, as we say, you know, it's not about religion, it's about relationship. And I think Celebrate Recovery is a perfect, perfect program to help reorient that relationship between an individual who's struggling and the Lord Jesus Christ, higher power. That's what makes Celebrate Recovery work. The number one misconception, I think, of Celebrate Recovery is it's automatically, oh, it's for drugs and alcohol. And, uh, and so, so often people are sitting in, in, in churches or, they're, or they're, they're looking for recovery programs and they don't, they don't struggle with that. And, and I always say, thank God you don't struggle with that. But Celebrate Recovery is for any hurt, habit, or hang up. And, and what that simply means is we've all been hurt. We've all experienced something in our lives, whether it's, you know, young, you know, teenager. It, it doesn't matter where you are in life. You know, I'm, I'm I guess, middle-aged. And, and got into recovery about six years ago. So it's just one of those, the biggest misconception is it's drugs and alcohol, when really nationally or internationally, that accounts for about a third. So that means two thirds of the people that come to celebrate recovery are there for you know, codependency, gambling, anger, um, you, know, you name it, kind of a non-chemical. I'm in celebrate recovery for you know, kind of sexual sin, a, a sexual addiction, which is a non-chemical thing but it was incredibly destructive to, to me personally, my impact in my relationship with, uh, with Jesus, and it, it almost destroyed my marriage. Um, and so it has made an incredibly huge difference in my walk with Christ and my, my relationship with my wife and my family. I got into, you know, Celebrate Recovery uh, in April of, of 2016. Uh, kind of, you know, hit, hit, uh, what we like to call your rock bottom. Um, and, uh, you know, when we talk sexual addiction, you know, sexual sin, you know, my issue, um, you know, several of them, but probably the, the one that I think impacts so many people is an addiction to pornography. Uh, you know, it's just one of those distorted views of marriage, distorted views of sexuality and, and what God's plan was. Um, I polluted my mind for years with that. Um, and it, you know, uh, it had an impact. It, it basically um, caused me to make some really poor choices uh, that impacted my marriage. Uh, it impacted the relationship with, with my family. I have, I have daughters. Um, you know, but more so than all of that, it, it was impacting my, my walk with Christ. You know, I would, I would attend church. I would, I would teach Sunday school. And when I got into recovery, I realized, hey, you are an empty suit. And I remember reading that one time and I mean, just rereading that testimony of a person that I'm like, that, that is me. You know, I'm playing the game. I come to church, I smile, but I'm an empty suit. And, and so for the last six years of being in recovery, it, my, it's almost like my, my desire is that relationship, sustained recovery, sustained relationship with Christ. But it's almost like I'm not being an empty suit anymore. I can't be an empty suit. And part of this is, is trying to, to communicate to, to, to the church, to the community. You know, there is healing. There's freedom. You don't have to hide. You don't have to be, you know, filled with guilt and shame. Because that was the biggest thing holding me back was, hey, I, I, I come to church. Uh, I teach Sunday school. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean I now have to be open? That's part of my healing is sharing with other folks um, my journey. And the journey has been um, incredible for one reason, Jesus Christ, period, my higher power. That's the only reason my recovery works. And, and you know, every year, you know, it's New Year's every year. It's like, you know, what, what, what do you hope for this year? And I always, you know, think since I've been in recovery is my goal is sustained recovery. And I used to share this with other celebrated recovery leaders. And okay. And it's like, that means my recovery is active participation. In other words, I have to be active in my recovery every day. You know, one of the steps in celebrate recovery is a, a daily time with God. 
And so every morning, you know, I, I do a devotion. Um, I, I pray. It's just one of those. It helps me to start the day to calibrate. And on those few days where a schedule gets in the way or whatever, and I don't do that, it shows. And so, you know, sustain recovery. And that starts with making a commitment. Um, I always, you know, tell folks, you know, like so many other things, you know, recovery cannot be passive. You know, my, my walk with Christ can't be passive. <laughs> it was passive for, for decades, and it led to uh, a lot of bad choices. So my recovery is active. And, uh, and part of that is, is, you know, doing this, you know, um, kind of uh, video for the church because I want people to understand Celebrate Recovery, you know, provides freedom. And the reason it provides freedom is it provides you with that kind of honest, safe harbor place to get right with Christ. Currently Thursdays at 7. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it, it, right now it's a, you know, kind of a small group we're, we're, we're getting started. Uh, but I would highly encourage anybody, either you show up at 7. Uh, it's a safe place. Uh, that's one of the things that's uh, very important. Anonymity and confidentiality are very, very important. So we meet in a uh, in a part of the church that is kind of separate from others because, you know, um, I recognize, you know, I, I, I think about my first time walking through the doors to celebrate recovery, filled with guilt and shame. And it's one of those, you know, I, I wouldn't, you know, wanting a thousand people, you know, to see me. Um, and so that's why, you know, here we have an area that's kind of separate uh, that allows people that that kind of safe place to to come and and begin the journey of of recovery. What would you say to yourself if you were watching this in church before your transition? Um, like if you could talk to yourself. <laughs> That's a great. Uh, or talk to somebody who's watching. Yeah. Who, who feels um, that same shame but hasn't taken the step? What's going to convince them? Appreciate the loss. You know, when we talk about, you know, addiction, compulsive behaviors, hurts, habits, and hangups, I look back and I and I and I see what I lost. Meaning, you know, what I stole from my wife, what I stole from my family, you know, time, affection, um, just being there mentally. You know, so so if 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 that is you, if you were living a double life. You know, I, I almost in, in looking back, it was almost like I was a secret agent because, or I had a double life because I had the, 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 you know, addictive compulsive behavior life. And then I could just quickly, quickly flip and be the empty suit, be the, be the loving father. But the whole time I still was being pulled apart, you know, drawn, you know, to, 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 to two different lives. So looking back, um, you know, and I've spoken to, you know, many men who, who, who almost are grieving uh, because of what they recognize they have taken. You know, whether it's men, women, it doesn't matter. I, I think for me, is if, if you are struggling, if you were sitting in church look, listening to this, thinking, hey, you know, it, you know, that's for those people, I can assure you, everybody listening and watching this, guess what? We're all those people. We're all fundamentally broken, and we need that relationship with Jesus. And that's what this program is about. Because I think so often it is, you know, those people that sit in church, you know, like me. I mean, and, and when I got into recovery, we were in Northern Virginia, and I used to sit in our church, and I'm thinking to myself, if I could see everybody's bubble, it, it is what's going on in their life. And, and I would, my wife and I would have this conversation. I guarantee every person in here needs to be in Celebrate Recovery for something. I was leading up to that. So, I mean, and people are like, oh, but I think the hurdle is, you know, it's not just chemical and drugs, you know, yeah. chemi or, uh, you know, chemical addiction, alcohol and drugs. It's for that. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it's also for, you know, anger. You know, I've, I've done Celebrate Recovery up in Northern Virginia and, you know, it ran the gamut of people and their struggles. And, and you know, it was just like eye-opening 
to realize here is a huge inclusive group that it doesn't matter what you're dealing with, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. So for those or that one person out there who's skeptical, <laughs> who's watching this thinking, yeah, yeah, not, not for me, or I'm just not there yet, you haven't hit your rock bottom, let me just encourage you to, to think about the cost of continuing with whatever is your issue. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, drugs or alcohol. Um, anger, you know, I, I see such anger in individuals and that anger drives a lot of poor choices. And I think anger comes down to lack of control. And for me, I had to kind of accept, you know, that uh, the only thing I can control uh, on a daily basis, quite frankly, is my attitude. My attitude and my relationship with God. Everything else, I don't control. So if you're sitting there wondering, is this for me? Or you've concluded, you know, what's the next song? <laughs> you know, next. Um, I, you know, I challenge you to think about what freedom really feels like. Or go back to a time in your life before whatever the hurt habit and hang up is. And remember what it was like not to have to deal with this because that's freedom. But here's the most important takeaway is the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell you what, um, having been in recovery, having kind of recommitted my life to Christ, it has made, you know, I, I don't have words to describe the difference that it's made, but I tell you what, I wake up every day glad to be alive. I wake up every day glad that my Lord died for me and, and loves me and that I matter to him. You matter to Christ. It's time.